What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the Ask a CISSP podcast. So this is a very special episode of Ask a CISSP, uh, which is already a, a special episode of The Other Side of the Firewall. So my name is Ryan Williams. I'm your host uh, and founder of The Other Side of the Firewall, where we talk about the latest and breaks in cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass cylinder breakers, those people of color who made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. Uh, we do episodes every day of the week, so Monday and Tuesday are topics, usually 15 minutes or less. Wednesday's discussion, usually we talk about either something that just happened in the world of cybersecurity, or we uh, kind of take a deep dive into diversity and inclusion within the field, because uh, there's a, a pretty severe lack of diversity and inclusion. And then Thursdays, uh, being asked to see SSP is usually when I sit down with someone who's either in the C-suite or C-level position, uh, who is adjacent to cybersecurity and is kind of giving a hand up to those trying to break in, or someone who is trying to break in and just trying to help them on their journey. Uh, and then Fridays, everything else. So it's about movies, books, games, pop culture, like all that uh, fun stuff. So it's the non-cybersecurity uh, episode. Uh, and we, like I said, we have something for you every day of the week. Uh, however, this one's a little bit different because it's the long weekend, right? It's Memorial Day weekend when I'm recording this. And I've been playing with GPTs. And I'm super excited to show you how you can make a simple G, uh, GPT. Uh, and then how it can be turned up or not. So stay tuned for all of that, right? So I'm going to take you through the four steps of how to build it uh, and how to uh, basically optimize it. And then we're going to show you how you can level up your GT GPT to do uh, some special things as well. So with that being said, I'm already sharing my screen. Uh, hopefully you can see it. So I have uh, ChatGPT+. Plus. There's several different uh versions of chat gpt so we're going to get to that as well but um basically what i'm going to do is show you how to build your own gpt four simple steps uh obviously uh ai has become a powerful tool right i always say that it still has to be people behind the scenes using it but it's better chisel uh than than we've had in the past so as opposed to using it as a, a glorified search engine i use chat gpt and you should as well to act as an assistant, a copywriter, editor, or even a specialized version of yourself to handle those mundane tasks that uh, you don't have to bother with any longer. You can focus on the big big picture. So before we get started, what is a GPT? So GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. It's an AI model developed by OpenAI designed to understand and generate human-like text. Once built, your GPT can complete tasks based on simple instructions that you can refine over time. Imagine how much your quality of life could improve if you could focus on the big task as opposed to all of the prep work that goes into it. So that's why it's time for you to build your own GPT. And it's very simple, no coding necessary. So uh, step zero, because you can't start without understanding what you're getting yourself into. Uh, so you have to understand the cost. So to create and customize GPTs, you need access to OpenAI's API which usually requires a subscription. Uh, a quick overview is that Chat GPT Plus, that's what I'm currently using, 20 bucks a month and offers general access, uh, even during peak times, faster response times, and priority access to new features. And you can tweak and build GPTs. So you have Chat GPT Team, which I'm sorry, there's a lot of Gs and Ts, so it's throwing me off. Uh, that's 25 bucks per user per month annually or $30 per user per month if you're paying monthly. And that allows you to do collaboration. I'm not there yet. I don't have a team uh, yet to work on my GPTs with me. And then you have ChatGPT uh, Enterprise, and that's tailored to you and your organization, usually reserved for large organizations. And that's a custom price for a custom bill. So again, I'm not there uh, with it. So without further ado, we're going to get to step number one, create a new GPT. So in the top left-hand pane, you will see a button named Explore GPTs. So here are the GPTs. There we go. I'm, I'm, getting, it, I'm getting myself together, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that I've built or that I'm tinkering with and, and uh, uh, trying to optimize. We're going to build a TIC 3.0 evaluator GPT, and I'm going to show you how to get it to that next level. Again, if you stay tuned throughout the entire uh, uh, recording. And with that being said, so what is TIC? TIC is the Trusted Internet Connection uh, 3.0, which is a, uh, a standard that's being uh, rolled out through um, the Department of Defense, federal government, things of that nature, uh, in order to better secure your uh, 
your network environment. So I, I'm an analyst within the GRC space, which is government risk and compliance, as well as a consultant in cybersecurity. So I care about this because I do evaluations of different frameworks. And with this one rolling out, I'm kind of helping out a client. So uh, what I want to do is kind of build something out, but we'll, we'll get there. So with that being said, I wanted to create a GT, GPT uh, to help me out. So you'll click on Explore GPTs. All right. Once you're there, uh, you're going to see the marketplace. Right? So this is where GPTs are located. Uh, everyone can see this. You can use this. So before I was a paid member, I used to go here and use ones like Canva and so, so on and so forth to build uh, products using other people's designs. But we are going to build our own, which we have this button right here called Create. So you'll click that. All right. Once there, it's going to allow you to configure your own GPT. Uh, you can either talk to the, the GPT builder. So it's kind of like a chat bot. You can talk and say, hey, I want to build this. I want to build that. How do I do this? How do I do that? It, it'll walk you through the process. It's actually really cool. However, uh, I already know what I want to do and how I want to do it. Uh, because I've gone through this process a, a few times. As you can see, I had a bunch of GPTs I've been working on. So I'm going to click on configure. So when you go to configure, don't get scared. It's not, you don't need to know any code. You don't need to know anything special. You're just going to do follow the steps, right? So it's going to ask for a name. So we're going to make this, like I said, trust the internet connection. So tick 3.0. Let's call it beta. So I'm going to fuse with my uh, current one. Then you're going to put in a description. So description, I'm going to say, uh, this GPT will allow you to uh, learn more about capabilities. That's not what I named or described mine before, but I just want to do something different. Okay, then instructions. So this is what this is. You're teaching the GPT basically uh, how you want to behave, what do you want it to do, and what do you want it to not do. So with that being said, I already have some that I've come up with. So I can get a matching result. So for mine, I'm going to say this GPT will review the test guidance. It will then read each of the capabilities and generate questions with examples for each use case specific guidance to test if the organization meets all TIC 3.0 guidance. Expect the input to be the title of the capability, and you will provide example questions as the output. So I told it what it's designed to do. I told it what I expect the inputs to be and what I expect the outputs to be. So now with that, you can build conversation starters. So for me, I will put in some terms, right? So least privilege. Don't make fun of me for not knowing the spell. That's why I have autocorrect. Uh, let's see. Identity. Access management will be another one. And the third one, let's go with uh, break and fix, because I know that's also a term. So now that we have some conversation starters, you saw them pop up over here. So this is your preview pane. So as you build here, you'll start to see things populate on the right hand side uh, for your testing. Uh, and then knowledge. So you're going to upload files uh, that will be helpful for it to be able to. Uh, to access. So you can either have to just access the internet, which I don't do um, to a certain extent, like I limit that. I want to give it as much of the uh, approved source documentation as possible. Uh, it just helps me to make sure that all my stuff is sanitized, that it all meets the proper guidance, and it's not being polluted by whatever the internet churns out. So with that being said, I'm going to attach some guidance. In the knowledge field, you're going to want to upload files that help you with uh, basically it's a repository for where you want to pull information. So I like to have governed, approved documentation in these models that I'm creating. So that way it's not being polluted by junk off the internet. It's this is what's been approved by CISA. This is what's been approved by NIST. Uh, and what it says around cybersecurity and information um, security agency. Uh, they're going to be my trusted source for this material. I'm going to go to upload files. I'm going to start uploading those files. So I have the guidebook. I'm going to put that in there. Uh, I have one of the use cases. I think this is a traditional use case. I'm going to put that in there. Let's see what else I have. I have 
cloud case, office case, put those in there as well. I think it should be good for now. So I'm going to take those as my knowledge. I'm going to leave the capabilities as they are. So web browsing, I still want to be able to search the web. Uh, Dali uh, image generation, I still want to create images of ISOs. So, uh, so feel those are important. I don't need the code interpreter right now. So if I had like a uh, CSV file or something like that, I want to make Excel, I can add that as well. And then uh, when you create new actions, that's you create actions outside of ChatGPT. I have a name, I have a description, I have instructions, I have my conversation starters just to help the user know kind of what to do. And then I have my knowledge. So I'm going to go ahead and click Lease Privilege and see what it spits out. Ah, as you can see, it is giving me uh, exactly what I wanted. So it's giving me the general questions, it's giving me examples, and it's doing it per. Implementation. So you have the technical implementation, you have the access reviews and audits, you have training and awareness, you have incident response, continuous improvement. Like it's giving me a lot of really good stuff. Uh, and then it says by addressing these questions, the organization can demonstrate its adherence to TIC 3.0 least privilege guidance. So it's already doing what I wanted to do, but it's the simplest form. Like I wanted to be able to reference the material that I gave it, which I did in real time. Uh, and then I wanted to be able to produce questions that I can use in my uh, checklist. Uh, as well as the uh, client or the user can uh, can use to help them and to uh, provide the proper evidence per control, per capability, so on and so forth. Uh, and then it's also given examples. So again, this is very simple GPT and it's already doing what I, what I asked it to do. All right, so that was us testing it out. So now optimizing, right? So tinkering. So now that we know it works, you can go ahead and create and save it. So I'm gonna go and create. Uh, here you can choose how you want to share it. So only with yourself, you don't wanna share it with anyone else. Anyone with the link, I highly encourage this. It's good to give it to your friends and say, hey, break it. Like, let me know what critiques and feedback you have, constructive criticism, uh, and let me know what I missed. And then there's a store, you can give it to the world. I would wait to after you um, make sure you understand how it works. Uh, appropriately. So I click anyone with the link, hit save. It's currently saving. All right, and now I have a link to give to other people so they can test out my GPT. Uh, and then you click view GPT, and then boom, there it is. So now it exists. So with that being said, we now have the GPT, we created it, we named it, we did all that good stuff. It works, we've tested it. Uh, and now we want to take it up a next level. So that's why I want you guys to continue to watch the video because now I can show you how to evolve your uh, your GPT. So real quick, please like, share, subscribe, all the things I forgot to say at the top. Uh, again, we are the Other Side of the Firewall podcast. Uh, and then this episode's Ask a CISSP. Uh, so that's a certified information system security professional. So that's the certification that I hold, uh, as well as a lot of the people that I talk to on the podcast. Uh, we are uh, dropping episodes every day. So Monday, Tuesday are our topics, 15 minutes or less. Wednesday, discussion, usually that's around 20 to 30 minutes. Thursdays, ask a CISSP. So that's an interview. It can go anywhere from 45 minutes to about an hour uh, where I talk to people about their journey, uh, their backgrounds, their experience, how they broke into cybersecurity, what they're currently doing uh, at their, their jobs and what they're doing to give back to the community. Or I talk to people who are trying to break in and answer their questions. And then Fridays, everything else, so movies, books, games, all that crazy stuff, uh, just so we can unwind and show a different side of ourselves on the podcast. Uh, hit up all the channels that go by our names, either the other side of the firewall, the other side of the FW, ask a CISSP, or you can hit me personally, I'm at RyRy Security Guy, that's R-Y, R-Y Security Guy. You can find me on Clubhouse, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Threads, Instagram, uh, pretty much everywhere and then we do an article for every episode and that goes on linkedin and medium and if you subscribe to our newsletter you get all that stuff rolled up every friday on both linkedin and, and um, medium as well and it's called the weekly rundown so that we'll have all of our topics a little slice of life as well some stuff that we have going on in the background vacation family products that we want to review things of that nature uh and then uh just a rundown of all of the week's shows where you can click on the links, watch the videos, this three audios all embedded. So definitely check that out as well. It's called the weekly rundown. So without further ado, how do we take it up a level? So with that being said, I'm going to switch up the instructions a little bit. So I'm currently running 
a 1.1 version of this guy. So simply click right here. So we click on that GPT and go to edit. And now I want to switch to the instructions, which you should be doing anyway, kind of tweak, optimize, change the order of operation sometimes. Just figure out like what is going to make this GPT do exactly what you want to do or surprise you and do something that you didn't even know you wanted it to do. So my instructions. So again, this GPT, uh, review the attached guidance and will then read each of the capabilities and generate questions with examples for each specific use case to test. If the organization meets all TIC 3.0 guidance, also reference which NIST CSF and SP 800-53 control families and control names. Fix my typo. These capabilities belong to. And then expect the input to be the title of the capability, and you will provide example questions as the output. In addition to your response, also provide your output in the form of an Excel spreadsheet. So now I'm adding some 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 flair to it, right? I want you to give it to me in multiple formats. So I'm just giving you the text, also giving you a spreadsheet I can export it. Then two, you will then prompt the user with the following request. Please attach evidence that meets this requirement with a brief explanation. So that's, I put that in quotation marks, that's what I wanted to ask. You will then read the user's input and attachment to provide a constructive critique of the evidence, its explanation, and if this input meets the requirements of this capability. So now I'm asking it to take another input. So it's going to produce like, hey, you're talking about least privilege. Now give me some evidence to show that you're, you're actually implementing this within your uh, environment. And then when that person attaches the evidence, it's going to read it and then give them a critique if that beats muster, basically. So again, I'm doing this kind of live. So hopefully this all works out in a finals publication. So please bear with me. I'll probably do a time skip. To make it happen. Okay, so I, I found the knowledge I'm looking for. I'm going to upload those files. So again, upload files. I'm going to put in the NIST SP, so special publication 853, Rev 5, which is the newest at the time it's recording. I'm also going to put in the NIST CSF 2.0 guidance. So now it has all of the TIC 3.0 guidance I wanted to give it as well as the NIST CSF and uh, Special Publication 800-53 Rev 5. So now it has new knowledge and new instructions. So again, what I wanted to do is I wanted to produce all the information to do with least privilege, but then I wanted to also point out the control families so I know where to reference. I figure I was overlapping, right, in my, my controls, uh, as well as then I wanted to ask me or prompt me for evidence. And then when I provide the evidence, it's going to give me a critique. And all I did was add another paragraph. So I had paragraph one, and that was like, hey, spit out this information. So when I have something to quickly reference, uh, and now I'm going to go a step further and say, I don't want you to just spit out that information, but I want you to let me know what control families it belongs to. And then uh, I want you to ask me for evidence. I'm going to provide that evidence. I want you to critique that evidence and give me an output. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to click least privilege again. All right, as you can see, it's spitting out the NIST CSF references. So now I know which function, the category, the subcategory. It's giving me the uh, NIST special publication 800-53 controls, the control family, the control. It's giving me the question to ask, right? So here's the example of a question. Here's the follow-up to a question. It's breaking it down by the access control policies, the role-based access controls, access review and audit, separation of duties, like it's getting to the nitty gritty, right? Access termination is breaking it all down. It then gives me a spreadsheet, which is awesome. So that spreadsheet then breaks it down further. So that way I can take all those questions and be able to either make a mass spreadsheet or I can provide it to the client. So that way they can go through and they can answer it or I can use it myself as a checklist. And now it's prompt to the user. So it says, please attach evidence that meets the requirement with a brief explanation. So I probably didn't have to use the, the quotations. I just thought I had to. Apparently I don't. So actually, let me go to update. And let's look at it in real time because it looks like it's doing what I wanted to do. So I'm going to go to it from an operational standpoint and verify. Okay. So I can have a link to share if I wanted to. I'm going to go view my GPT. 
click leash privilege again. It should spit out something very similar to before. Okay, so slightly different, but it's still breaking it down. Oh, the format changed a little bit. Okay, so that's interesting. So I'm going to have to put in a line to tweak it to make sure it's always following the same format. But this also works. So this, this is good to show that, that it, it changes slightly. So I'm going to have to go back in there and try to make it, try to standardize it, because I don't, I don't like to be surprised, right? I want it to be consistent every single time. But again, for two paragraphs, this is not bad. So it has the examples with the functions, the control families and names, the examples of least privilege capability with questions and examples of the type of evidence you can provide. It gives me a spreadsheet that I can uh, probably tweak to make it actually spit out the this, this spreadsheet. And then attach evidence. So I'm going to upload some evidence. So it's the least privileged evidence I created uh, through GPT, actually. So least privileged evidence. Let's see what it, it critiques, what it says. So constructive critique. Oh, it's pretty good. So of the evidence I provided, right, it goes through and it's like, okay, frequency of access reviews. So it says the evidence quarterly access reviews are conducted with some discrepancies noted, but not always rectified within the month. It's critique. Quarterly reviews are a good practice, but the failure to rectify discrepancies promptly is a significant concern. Immediate corrective action should be implemented to ensure at least privileged compliance. So that's amazing. So it's reading the evidence that was provided. And it's giving me a critique of that evidence and then how I should fix it or why it's bad. So here's some recommendations for improvement. So immediate rectification of discrepancies. So implement procedures to ensure that any discrepancies found during access reviews are rectified immediately. So it's, it's actually going into the source and then it's comparing it to the evidence I was giving it and it's spitting out the actual critique and how to fix that or improve that. Automated provisioning and deep provisioning. So it says use automated tools to manage user access provisioning and deep provisioning to reduce delays and errors. So let's see it's automated provisioning and deep provisioning. What do they like about that? Provisioning, evidence, manual processes relying on supervisor's approval, not automated. Critique, manual processes are prone to human error and delays. Implementing automated provisioning processes with supervisory oversight can enhance efficiency and accuracy. So again, Really good. It's been out some really good stuff. I really do appreciate it. So it says evidence that addresses the identified gaps and improvements need, needed a brief explanation of the measure taken. Hmm. So, oh, okay, it's asking for an input. So I also put in there that it would take your input as well as your evidence. So you can actually type up. I guess you can, you can in this case, it would be like this is what this evidence is and why it's this way. And I can look at the evidence so you can see I'm not. Bluffing here, least privileged evidence. So here is the evidence. So this was basically um, me answering questions, right? So I knew some of the questions I was going to ask, and then I provided evidence. So this is how we did it. So I did an export of the questions, and then I filled in what my justifications were and what we did. So in the future, right, when I do a 2.0 of this, I wanted to uh, be able to better discern the information I'm giving it. Because right now, if I just give it any evidence, it's going to break it down and look at it. But it's not necessarily uh, stop me from giving evidence that isn't part of that capability. This is going to critique the evidence I give it. And now I want to make it, I want to make more detailed associations. So that'll be the 2.0 version. But I just wanted to do a quick recap and rundown of, of what I did, right? So in this, I created the, uh, the chat box. Let me go back to edit GPT. So I gave it a name, I gave it a description, I gave it instructions, which will be in the description of this video. Uh, I gave it some conversation starters. I then gave it knowledge, right? I took uh, real uh, source material, so that way it didn't get jumped from the internet. Uh, so that way it knew, they already had a repository of knowledge, so that way it could actually access that knowledge, provide detailed questions, detailed examples, and then critique the evidence that it was given, which was in the second part. Well, basically, I was asking for more detailed explanation. I wanted to tie it to the uh, special publication, 800-53 Rev 5, as well as uh, the, uh, the NIST CSF 2.0. And then I wanted to take the evidence. I wanted to critique the evidence, uh, which it did. So, again, four steps to make it simple. A fifth step 
to evolve it to the next step. And then the, the plan is to take the 2.0 and make it even more uh, user-friendly as well as uh, it'll scrutinize the evidence a little bit more in detail and provide better explanations. So check out that video when it drops, 2.0. But again, check us out on the other side of the firewall. Ask a CISSP. Hit me up at all the websites that go by our names. Send me a person at RyRy Security Guy. That's RY, RY, RY Security Guy. You can find me on LinkedIn, Clubhouse, Twitter, Threads, uh, LinkedIn primarily, Medium, and all the other good places. Stay safe. Stay secure. Thank you.